Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video, I will talk about leaving academia, the forbidden topic. A quick recap about my background. I quit my job in scientific research to become a scientific illustrator about five years ago. A lot of you guys have asked me question about switching career to scientific illustration or trying to do something else other than research. I want to share my experience of switching career and how you can avoid the mistakes that I have made. I will list five steps that you can follow to uh, have a smoother transition my was really rough right after i graduated with my life science degree i started working as a research assistant at a lab the boss was amazing she's a really good pi the colleagues were really nice it was a perfect nine to five job it is really rare in academia you guys know you can have insane hours because you have to keep up with the experiments i was really lucky to be able to work there but after three years i still became disenchanted with research. I see that we spend years doing the experiments. You prepare your manuscript, you get rejected multiple times. Finally, the article is published. Then, on average, only three people read that article. I'm someone who really want my work to be appreciated. If I make something, I want people to see it. All my YouTube videos has more views than three views. You can see how I become really frustrated with the structure of academia. That's the main reason why I left. That made my life extremely challenging for many years. I survived, but I did made a lot of mistakes. If you want to learn more about my mistakes, just leave them in the comments. This video, I will focus on the best practices. The first step is learn a skill that is on demand outside of academia. It could be making coffee, it could be coding, video editing, translation, whatever that is, not doing your niche experiments. This skills can help you get money immediately. This can make your career more flexible, give you more options in choosing where you want to switch to. In my case, my non-academic skills are taking blood, giving injections, graphic design. I know a lot of you guys want to try out graphic design, but don't know how to use the software. You can check out my online course of Adobe Illustrator. It's a shameless plugin, but my course is quite nice. A lot of university has used the course, so check it out. I highly recommend everybody to get a new skills, especially if you're still in academia. And the second step is to research the industry you are interested in. Take a look at which skills they are looking for. You can check their recruitment post on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, go acquire those skills, put them in your CV. It is also very important to research how much money people make in this industry. I know a lot of people working in academia says that you shouldn't put so much emphasis on money. You should. Money is really important. Not saying it in a greedy way, but if you don't have money, you can do nothing. I really hope this is not the case, but that has been my experience throughout the past five years. This is one of the biggest mistakes I've made. I had no idea before I entered the art sector and I struggle a lot financially. Those are okay, why is this happening to me? Then I read a Dutch government statistics on the average income of different industry in the Netherlands. The lowest of them all is the art industry, which is 1,300 euro per month. That is below the minimum wage of Netherlands. And while being poor, I made a lot of bad decisions. For example, I didn't buy dental insurance. I had the rotted tooth for a year. Eventually, I have to pull the tooth out. Lesson learned. Don't be ashamed to ask for money. Check it out when you are researching the industry. After doing the research and you are sure that you really want to go into th this industry, then the next thing you should do is to start building connections. Getting a job has a lot to do with who you know instead of what you know. And there was something that's not very political correct to say, but uh, that has been so true. I have good connection in Taiwan. It was so easy for me to get jobs and get clients in Taiwan. Nobody knew me in the Netherlands when I first moved here. I got no opportunity at all. But that is why it is extremely important to network. The best way to build professional connection is to do internship or part-time job at the, the company you want to work at. This is also a good way to really try out the job and see if it is actually what you think it is. A lot of time when we are looking from the outside, we have rosy glasses on. We don't get to see the ugly side of that industry. So after you have done all of these things, you're sure you really want to leave academia, start sending out a resume secretly. Don't tell your boss, don't tell your co-workers because it will take a while. It is very normal you send out 100 resume and you only get one reply don't take it personally it will be a grind it really takes some luck to get a good job it might be traumatizing for you to see that the world doesn't care about you <laughs> on the bigger scale at least it was quite traumatizing for me i was really up in my head it is very normal you don't get a response just keep on moving secretly don't tell anyone until your offer is secured finally you got your new offer it is so much better than 
than your academic position. The last thing is to leave on good terms. It is always better to keep a good connection with your previous colleagues. A lot of my previous bosses are my clients. It really helped me to start off my career as a scientific illustrator. I'm so grateful for them. It is amazing to have their support, but that might not be always the case. You know, I also have experience in leaving in bad terms. It is really like a love relationship. Sometimes the breakup is messy and if things are getting nasty, then just burn the bridge. Burn it all down. They will not be good clients to collaborate with in the future anyway. Only do that if they're assholes. If they're nice, leave on good terms. Before I close the video, I want to share some general mindset about career change I wish I had when I was in my early 20s. The first is every career is difficult. There is always some toxic part in them. I work so many jobs. Besides scientific research, I have uh, been a physician assistant, teaching courses at the universities. I worked in a manga shop. I work in a hotel. I also worked in Alaska in a salmon factory. Oh my god, I'm one of those people who have done many jobs. I, it's quite funny because I didn't see myself that way. After I laid it out, I've done so many jobs. All of them have something toxic, even with my dream job as a scientific illustrator. At the end of the day, it really comes down to whether this is the type of toxicity that you can tolerate or you're into, and whether the job is paying you enough to deal with the bullshit. That comes to the second mindset, which is money is important. I cannot stress this enough. So somehow in the higher education system, they like to preach this idea that it is tacky to talk about money. You have to have a higher purpose. You got to secure your bag, okay? Because without money, you cannot pay your health insurance. Then you will lose your teeth. That literally happened to me. I lost a tooth. Thank God is at the back. I remember I went to a birthday party for researchers. One of them had a missing tooth. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, I can really relate with that because I also have one. It is so expensive expensive to have dental implants over 3,000 euros. We know how much academics earned. So yeah, I can understand why there's a missing tooth. That's why money is important. If you want to have all your body part in place, the baseline that just, you gotta have money. And the last mindset is it will take a lot of time. It took me almost five years to really get a grip on how to survive as a illustrator. I remember when I was studying, the professors always say it will take time. I thought, oh, it might be like six months, but no, it's counted in years okay <laughs> don't pressure yourself too much take one step at a time if you're doing a career change you're doing something that's extremely difficult i will close up the video with one of my favorite book the principle by ray dalio i put it on the shelf for so long it's, it looks so dirty i'm a little bit embarrassed one of the quote from here if you're open-minded enough and determined enough you can get virtually anything you want this is a quote from a billionaire self-made i guess it's true i don't know i'm literally testing it out right now i hope it will work for me and for you. Thank you for hanging out with me today. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to share some of my embarrassing mistakes with you so you will not make them. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next week.